Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and I have read one of the best fiction books that I've ever read this week. I have also read kind of not my favorite book and um, a good nonfiction and a good fantasy. So come along with me and I'm excited to tell you about what I've read. Let's start with the nonfiction. So I read Until Proven Safe, The History and Future of Quarantine by Jeff Manau and Nicola, Nicola Twilly. And this was really good, very well researched. This was actually, they had been researching this prior to the current pandemic. And so it wasn't a rushed, thrown together kind of thing, but it went through all sorts of history of, um, different quarantine measures throughout the ages. I learned a lot through this book. Um, for example, quarantine is often used incorrectly, um, especially now. Um, quarantine means when you are isolating for the purpose of determining whether you are sick or not. If you already have an illness and you are staying away, you aren't quarantined, you are isolating. And quarantine is has to have that measure of uncertainty of whether or not you are safe or not. And it's just that period of waiting. And it has been used for a long time and it's, um, there's a lot of future, of um, possibilities in the future on how this can be used. Um, this book was really wide. Um, it was very good. I enjoyed a lot of it, but I did think some of it got a little too wide. I thought that the section, there was a whole section talking about nuclear waste and how it has to be separated from everyone and kept safe so that until it is no longer dangerous and that could be, you know, millions of years and how are we going to um, keep people away from that. And while I kind of understand where they tr tried to draw the connection, like we are gonna keep that separate from people until it is proven safe, I felt like it almost was a bit of a tangent. Like what, I, I don't know if it really fit with the rest of the book about quarantine. Um, there was also a really long chapter, kind of boring about male decontamination, like all kind of interesting subjects, but like, I feel like the book maybe could have used a little more focus, but super interesting and super relevant because while it does talk about a lot of the historical uses of quarantine, it um, pulls in all of the current things about our current pandemic and how we have used quarantine and how the response has been to um, in our current situation. So I enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I recommend it. Uh, but I mean, there are chapters you could probably skip or that could be maybe their own book on nuclear waste or something like that. And I didn't quite understand how it all meshed together, but very interesting, lots of interesting information in this one. As for the book that I did not enjoy very much, I read An Emotion of Great Delight by Tare Mafi. And this like had all the elements of something that I think would have been really good. Like it's um, talking about, um, it has a lot of stuff about like um, racism and dealing with that and as well as dealing with loss. The main character, her brother has passed away and dealing with that in a family situation. And there are like really good themes and I feel like it could have worked really well and it talked about religion. There were lots of things that I wanted it to cover but mostly I just found it to be like, I found the main character to be like melodramatic and depressing. And for a book called An Emotion of Great Delight, I didn't find a lot of delight in this. I just found a lot of, she was just depressed all the time. And I understand that people can be depressed, but it just didn't give me any real insights into it. It just was kind of like, oh, okay, I don't want to read any more of this. And also there was a romance in this, which felt, I mean, maybe I would have liked it more as a teen, but it felt very um, like all encompassing. This is the most wonderful romance or whatever. And I, it kind of rolled my eyes at it. I didn't really, I wasn't convinced by it. Uh, this is written a little bit towards a young adult audience. And um, I mean, it just like on paper, it sounds like, you know, if you give me a little summary, I'm like, yeah, this sounds 
sounds like a good book. I'm excited to read this. But then when it came down to it, it just wasn't very successful for me. Um, but that leads me in to my favorite book um, for a book that tackled some of the themes of an emotion of great delight, but tackled them amazingly. One of the best books that I have read, um, uh, best fiction, fiction books that I've read in a long time, if not ever, like this was beautifully written, is A Place for Us by Fatima Farin Mirza. And this, wow, I recommend it to everyone. So it started out and I was a little, I was a little wary of it because the first part of the book, it um, has a chapter talking about that there's a brother that has kind of been estranged from the family and he is at this wedding of his sister. And then that first whole part of the book is a bunch of little like snippets from the family's life and they're not in chronological order. It jumps around so much. And at first I was like, ooh, what kind of timeline is this? This is gonna be too much. But then I started realizing like, it came together really well because I started realizing this is how like I would remember my life. You know, you don't remember everything chronologically. You remember bits and pieces and they kind of come together to create this whole and it was just beautifully crafted. Like that first part, it just was beautifully crafted. And at that point, I'm halfway through and I'm like, okay, this book actually is really good because it's just really well written how it all comes together and that's really cool. Then the next part, they go back to the wedding and they focus on the wedding and the brother. And this book, this part, just, I mean, I cried. It was meaningful. It had so many amazing themes of just like parental expectations and um, religion and loving people, even when things are hard. And it just was, it was beautiful and meaningful and it was just beautiful. Then it completely switched. So then the last part of the book is actually told in first person from the view of the father and it's written kind of as a letter or not, maybe not a letter, but it's written to his son. And it goes through some memories of his life as well as moving forward just, um, how much he loves his son and how much he wants to find a way for them to be together and I it was beautiful just beautiful so like overall that's kind of the structure of the book and it was gorgeous um I do not own very many books because I always feel like it's kind of pointless because I read a book I'm done with it then I have this book that I have to carry around forever. This is one that I want to own. I need to have it. I need to mark the passages. It was just beautiful. I just, okay, I want to read a quote from this book. It's one of my favorites. And there's so many good quotes. Like, I just want to, I want to mark up this book. Like, it's beautiful. But um, I just want to read this part. It's at the wedding with the brother there. And it says, Amar shivered. I don't think I will make it. Amar said, I'm sorry. Of course you can't come back inside, Amar. You can hardly sit up. No, I mean to the other place, the next place. I don't think I'll make it. I don't think you'll find me there. He had left the path. His parents had given him a map and directions, and he had abandoned it all. Now his heart was so ink dark, he could, not, he could be lost and not know it and not care and never know how to find his way back. Listen to me, Baba held onto his arm. You could never be more wrong, Amar. We taught you one way, but there could be others. We don't even know. Even we can only hope. How many names are there for God? 99. He knew all this by heart. Didn't that count for something? And are they all the same kind of name? No. Some contradict each other, remember? Didn't you just say to me, what if this is meant to show us more? What if we are meant to look closer? Amara nodded. Wind rustled the leaves. He sniffed and wiped his nose on his shirt sleeve. We will wait until you are allowed in, Baba said, as if to himself, I will wait. Baba pointed at the sky and Amara looked past the stars and past the lighter patch of the Milky Way, past the moon, and maybe God was there and maybe God wasn't. But when Baba said to him, I don't think he created us just to leave some of us behind, Amara believed him, Amara wanted to. Woo! It's, I mean, it just, 
is so beautiful, especially because I feel like I, I, I mean, like I'm religious and my parents are, and seeing that, you know, like how things change as you grow up and uh, learning to have a good relationship as a family and with God and to accept and love everyone. Um, it's just, this book just deals with those issues so beautifully. And I just can't like really describe how beautiful this book is um, and how meaningful it is. And, but I highly recommend that everyone read this because it's just, not only is it so well written, it just has beautiful ideas and beautiful things that, and it doesn't all end happy. Like things aren't gonna be perfect, but you know, it's life. It feels like life, but in the best sort of way. So I highly recommend it. I loved this book. So a pretty fun fantasy book was The Golem and the Jimmy by Helene Wecker. And this is following Shaba, a golem, and she's a person made out of clay. And then we have Ahmad, who is a genie, and he has been trapped. And they are both in New York in, um, let's see, 1899. So the setting is really kind of fun. We get a lot of kind of magical elements, but also this fun, bustling New York kind of feel. It's, um, it's really fun. It just follows them trying to hide in New York so nobody finds them, but also trying to find meaning in life and as they become friends and figuring out, you know, what's going on with their magic. And it's, it's a fun book. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought some parts got a little bit boring. Some of it just kind of felt like, how much can I read about people wandering around in the middle of the night because they're bored? Because that makes me feel kind of bored. Um, but it was really imaginative. Like I just thought the like characters and setting were really kind of original and fun. So I enjoyed this book a lot. If you're looking for a fun fantasy, like check this one out. It's great. Um, I don't, I, think there's another one and I don't think I am going to read it. Yeah, there's another book, I, The Hidden Palace. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna call it, like I'm okay. Um, but I did enjoy my time reading this one a lot. And that is it for the past week or so of reading books, my first wrap up of February. If anyone has opinions on these books, I would be happy to hear them. Um, once again, I do recommend A Place For Us. Please read it and please let me know what you think because I just, maybe it just was like specific to my life right now and everyone else will read it and think you, you thought it was that good. But I just thought it was so beautiful and so well done. Anyways, loved that one. Let me know what you think and I'll be back in probably a week or so with another wrap up of the books that I've read.